Good afternoon, it's time for Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Patterson. Today we'll join Here and Now reporter Joanne Magley for some insight about the intricacies of Volusia County's disposal program with a TV field trip to the Tomoka Landfill. And we'll hear from health reporter Stephanie Strong of the Volusia County Health Department as she brings us her report about why kicking the soda habit is a great idea. And finally, we'll join Community Information Director Dave Byron for some tips about keeping safe this holiday season with his guest, Chief Deputy Mike Coffin. Those segments, news, and more coming right up on Volusia Magazine. Stay tuned. Wildland firefighters from across Florida recently converged on Volusia County to hone their firefighting skills and to prepare for the upcoming fire season. Volusia County Fire Services hosted the week-long Southern Region Engine Academy at the Florida Sheriff's Youth Camp in Barberville. The 80-hour course helped participants to develop leadership skills and gain practical knowledge in the use of engines while fighting wildfires. The Academy is an intense training course designed to give experienced wildland firefighters the opportunity to improve their skills in fire engine operations, including driving, pumping, and maintaining engines. This training is it's an advanced training, as it was mentioned before, that uh, brings our people together, allows them to work with other agencies in that, to uh, be able to work off of the engines together with maybe people they haven't worked off of before. Uh, in Volusia County as it is, a lot of woodland area, a lot of woodland inter urban interface where we have a lot of structures intermixed in there. So the Engine Academy, what's going on with this class is it's going to teach them um, how they could get into areas, what to look for, how to set up on structural protection. On the final day, the instructors staged a live fire and let the participants use their enhanced skills to extinguish the fire and protect nearby structures. Firefighter instructors were on scene from Volusia, Brevard, Flagler, and Seminole counties. Other instructors who shared their knowledge represented the Florida Forest Service, the Florida Park Service, the Nature Conservancy, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, and the St. Johns River Water Management District. This class, we've been doing it for uh, since 1997 and it was great then and it's blossomed and gotten even better because more people are participating and it gives us a real chance to work together in an environment that's not as hectic as a wildland and a real wildland fire and so you build bridges you build communication lines and so then when you do get to the real fire and it's going someplace i know joe i worked with joe before on training and so this is going to be easy to put the fire to out working with joe and so it's those kind of opportunities and uh, Volusia County's done a great job. This is a really neat facility for it because we have a lot of space so that you can move some of the bigger equipment and Brevard County's partnered up. Um, so there's just a whole lot of people working together to achieve a common goal. Most of the Engine Academy students were from Central Florida, but several firefighters traveled from Michigan, Ohio, and South Dakota. When you think of a safe place, what do you think of? If you are like most people, you probably think of your home, a friend's home, or the police department. Did you know Votran buses also are considered a safe place? Safe Place is a nationally recognized program that provides access to immediate help and supportive resources for all young people in crisis throughout a network of sites sustained by qualified agencies, trained volunteers, and businesses. Votran has been a part of the National Safe Place program since 1990. Every Votran bus displays the Safe Place sign, identifying it to around. children as a place they can go for help, a place they can be protected. Votran got involved because we've got some, some staff that's very passionate about this program. We've got nearly 80 vehicles out on the road every day. And so when you, when you think about finding a safe place, and you look around, it's not going to be very hard to find a Votran bus. Uh, so all of our Votran buses are safe places and then, and then like I said, all of our facilities are safe places as well. But we had, we had some staff that really took it, took it uh, upon themselves to say, you know, this is something that good that we could do for our community. All Votran drivers have a direct line to professionals trained in crisis counseling. 
Votran works with the Beach House in Daytona Beach to provide training to its drivers so they know what to do if a youth asks for their help. Votran operators do not provide counseling. They provide a safe haven until those in need can be connected with someone who can help. Well, Votran's an ideal safe place. Um, our drivers are trained to um, interact and assist people with all kinds of disabilities. And plus, with our vehicles being spread out all over the county, on the beach side, on the mainland, southeast Volusia, west Volusia, even up in Pearson and Seville, so it, it makes it very accessible wherever someone's having a problem. There will probably be a bus by there within an hour that they could, they could access. For more information, you can visit votran.org. Volusia County's public library system recently introduced a novel way for patrons with overdue materials to pay off their late fees. For two weeks in November, patrons were able to pay off their fines by donating non-perishable food items to the Second Harvest Food Bank in a program that was called Food for Fines. More than 1,500 library patrons took advantage of the program, donating nearly 5,000 pounds of food through the county's 13 public library branches. The library lobbies were filled with canned fruits and vegetables, macaroni and cheese, peanut butter and jelly, cereal, soup, and other canned food items. In turn, the libraries waived more than $9,000 in late fees. Our patrons um, were thrilled with the opportunity you know, to help themselves get their fines waived. They were also um, very pleased to help the community. Many of our patrons um, didn't have fines, um, but they still contributed to the food drive because they, they wanted to, to be a part of it and to, to make a c contribution to their community. County employees joined with other public employees from Daytona State College, the Volusia County Health Department, and 14 cities to see which organization can collect the most food per full-time employee. Tune in next week to find out how much food the Feed the Need Drive raised. Hello, I'm Joey Alexander with the Volusia County Council. Did you know we have a turtle and seabird rehabilitation center right here in Volusia County? Since opening in 2002, the Marine Science Center in Ponce Inlet has cared for thousands of sick and injured sea turtles and birds and released many of them back to the sea. The Marine Science Center also has a touch pool, exhibit gallery, and areas where you can watch our specialists caring for marine animals. This unique center is next to the Ponce Inlet Lighthouse. To learn more and plan your day trip, visit marinesciencecenter.com. When you put your trash or yard waste to the curb, you probably don't think about the sophisticated trash disposal operation that goes on after your waste hits the county's Tomoka landfill. Joanne Magley has more in this week's Volusia Here and Now report. The 3,400-acre Tomoka Landfill near Daytona Beach is operated by Volusia County's Solid Waste Division. It handles approximately 1,300 tons of waste each day, a $25 million a year business operated with no ad valorem taxes. Everything that comes across our scales uh, at Tomoka and at the transfer station supports our operation. Lenny Marion is the director of Volusia County's Solid Waste Division. His customers include commercial haulers, as well as both residential and non-residential self-haulers who use the county transfer station and landfill facilities. We charge $34 a ton for regular household garbage, along with some other varied prices for tires, class three yard waste, and things of that nature. All of that money goes into a pot, and we look at our operations, our construction, our future construction, our payroll, all of everything that it takes to operate this and we have to run our operation based off of that, along with providing insurance, environmental insurance, liability insurance, so every cost that's associated with it, we, we have to make sure that we operate like a private sector business. At the Tomoka Landfill, there's a lot more than just a landfill. Multiple operations take place, including landfill gas management, household special waste handling, and there's even a recycling facility. 
And when it comes to recycling, Lenny says Volusia County has been at the forefront of this green initiative, especially since there's a materials recovery facility, also known as MRF, right at the landfill. We've been ahead of this curve for a long time on the recycling side. Uh, Gel Corporation and working with a partnership with them on the curbside and having our own MRF right at in our county and at our facility in a public-private partnership with them and leasing the building and working together with them to, to develop and make a strong, viable recycling program. And we're not just talking about recycling newspapers and soda cans. Methane, a naturally occurring gas emitted from landfills, is also recycled through a partnership with Fortistar. All of the gas wells that are within our footprints of the old cells and the new cells, we take and we extrapolate that gas out and it's just like a like a big vacuum cleaner. It sucks all that methane out of there and they're run through a scrubbing system and then they're brought into the plant and they're put into generators and we service about 3,800 households a year from the methane fuel that burns through those generators. Our yard waste program uh, we take out here and what happens is it gets ground up. It'll come in on the trucks from the commercial side and from the residential side. It goes into a big tub grinder. We, we, we grind it up, mix it with dirt, and we use it for cover material in the landfill. And what that does, that saves us money on the other end on our burrow operation where we don't have to dig a lot of our dirt to use to close the landfill out. We use the mulch combination dirt and it's a savings. It's a t we're taking a waste and reusing it. So we're saving costs in, within our operation. When it comes to traditional recycling, a sophisticated system separates plastic, papers, and metals. We have a public-private partnership with Gel Corporation. It's a recycling facility. All of the curbside recycling that's generated within the county is taken to this facility, dumped, put into a conveyor system, and it's source separated. The glass, the plastics, the newspapers, the cardboard, aluminum cans, ferrous and non-ferrous metal, all broken out into different bends. It's baled, then it's shipped to market, and we do some revenue sharing with Gel Corp on, on that operation. Gasoline, paints, thinners, pool chemicals, and similar materials cannot be disposed in your garbage because they're harmful to the environment. But you can drop these items off at the Household Hazardous Waste Facility at the Tomoka Landfill and the West Volusia Transfer Station. And while you're getting rid of your old paint, why not see if someone else's trash can become a new hue for your home? The county has a reuse program for paints and residents can pick from what's available at no charge. So the next time you put your trash and recyclables to the curb, you'll know a lot more about where it's going and the efforts that are being made to reduce, reuse, and recycle. For Volusia Here and Now, I'm Joanne Magley. Have you had a soda lately? Well, if you have, then you also had 10 teaspoons of sugar and 150 calories. Those high numbers are very alarming. That is why the Volusia County Health Department is encouraging you to find a healthy alternative to drinking soda. Stephanie Strong has more in this segment of Community Health Matters. Well, you're thirsty and you want something to drink. Don't quench that thirst with soda. It's not the healthy choice. Well, our sodas and, and sugar-containing drinks um, contain an enormous number of calories. They're actually a hidden source of calories, and uh, we're very concerned nationally about obesity in our youth and children. And the more soda and sugar-containing drinks they drink, uh, the more apt they are to become overnourished, overweight, or even obese. Did you know that one 12 ounce can of soda has 10 teaspoons of sugar? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. And that's only halfway. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That's a lot of sugar. Let me show you this way. As I said, one 12-ounce can of soda has 10 teaspoons of sugar. This is not a smart choice. Here's another smart choice tip for you. Did you know that drinking one 12-ounce can of soda per day for one year is equal to 35 pounds of sugar? 
Now, if you drink one additional can of soda per day for one year, that's equal to 15 pounds of body fat. Not a smart choice. Sugar-sweetened beverages are the largest source of added sugars in the diet of U.S. youth. Consuming these beverages increases the intake of calories, a factor potentially contributing to obesity among youth nationwide. Well, as I mentioned, soda leads to excess calories, which can lead to obesity, but also the sugar can cause tooth decay. Uh, as well as weakened bones. So those issues are out there also with soda. Healthy drink options. Have a pitcher of water cooled in the refrigerator so family members can drink water when they are thirsty. Add a slice of lemon or lime for flavor. Serve low-fat or fat-free milk and serve 100% fruit juice. Limit fruit juice to one serving per day. For Volusia Magazine and on behalf of the Volusia County Health Department, your guide to better health, I'm Public Information Officer Stephanie Strong. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other health-related issues, you can log on to volusiahealth.com. Hi, this is Corporal Kai Effen family, stationed in Wiesbaden, Germany. We would like to wish my family in Ormond Beach, Florida a happy holiday. Hi, I'm Master Chief Mark Derwin. I'm stationed here in Landstuhl, Germany, Landstuhl Regional Medical Center. I'd like to say hello to all my friends and family back in Deltona and Deland, Florida. Merry Christmas and go Gators! It's time now to head into the studio to join our Community Information Director, Dave Byron, for an in-depth discussion with his guest, Chief Deputy with the Volusia County Office of the Sheriff, Mike Coffin, for a few holiday safety tips. Well, happy holidays, everyone, and thank you, Amber. The holiday season is a joyous time, but it's also a time for crooks to prey on unsuspecting shoppers. As we approach the peak of the holiday season, this is a good time for a reminder on how to be safe during the holiday season. We're very pleased to have with us in the studio today, Mike Coffin. He's the Chief Deputy of the Volusia County Sheriff's Office. Mike, thanks for being with us. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, Dave. Thanks and happy, for having me. Happy holidays to all the men and women of the Sheriff's Office. Uh, you well, guys do you. a great job uh, throughout the course of the year. You know, Mike, uh, obviously as we get into the holiday season, uh, you know, sometimes there are unsavory people out there that prey on shoppers. People get distracted and that sort of thing. But before we do that, let's take a look at uh, the crime rate or the crime situation in general. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, my understanding is it's not up, it's down. Crime is down. Uh, it's been on a steady trend down um, since Sheriff Johnson took office back in 2001. Right. But even since 2008, we've seen our property crimes decline ever so slightly, but, but definitely on the decline. Any reason for that, Mike? I mean, other than the fact you guys are doing a great job, but I mean, uh, my understanding is, is nationwide it's down. It is down nationwide. Uh, what, what we do here is we look not only at, at crime rates, but we look at what our clearance rate is. And our investigators do a tremendous job of identifying criminals and, and the crimes that they commit and then putting those folks in jail. I know you have a lot of uh, sophisticated tools. Uh, I, I, one of the reasons why crime is down is because you have more computerized tools and more effective resources? Those things help, Dave, but I think more than anything, it's, it's the investigators knowing the people in their districts and getting out and having face-to-face -face contact with, with those folks. And that's that usually what solves crimes. Mike, uh, as we talk about the holiday season, obviously uh, people are busy. They're trying to get their gifts uh, co completed and they're out and about going up to do this. And that's a very busy time of the year. It's also a time of the year where people uh, can be victims. And that's what we want to talk about today. Let's talk about holiday shopping. Uh, what are some of the things that people need to keep uh, in their mind as they go out and, and go do their holiday shopping? The biggest thing, Dave, is, is for people just to be aware of their surroundings. Right. When, when you go out and you go shopping, park in well-lit areas, uh, keep your, your car locked, mm -hmm. and, and more importantly, don't leave uh, your belongings, your valuables in your car. Right. As you go from store to store and you're, you're putting your, your shopping into your car, if you can't put it in your trunk, put it out of sight because most criminals uh, will look at crimes of opportunity. Right. They'll walk past and see a an expensive electronics box or some jewelry store bags in there, mm -hmm. they'll smash the window out and grab it. It takes right. a matter of seconds and, and again, it's a crime of opportunity. Right. And a lot of times, uh, you know, these, these criminals are watching people and as you say, you know, you're walking out to the parking lot with an arm full of gifts or whatever, perhaps it's, it's at night. Uh, one of the things that people always need to do is to try to park, I think, as close as they can to the store and to certainly park in a, in a lighted area. Absolutely. Mike, uh, 
Credit cards, uh, that's another issue, uh, you know, we're seeing now that some of these uh, thieves uh, are able to actually, I guess, ping the ATM machines or something and, and get your credit card numbers. Uh, credit card theft, uh, that, that's a problem. Identity theft is a, is a huge problem, Dave. Um, there, there's some things though, that we can all do to help uh, better protect ourselves against identity theft. Right. Um, obviously, when, you, when you're solicited either by the telephone or through email or even through the regular mail, uh, for your personal information, social security number, right. driver's license number, those type of things. You should always be wary of those things because reputable companies don't reach out to you for that type of information. So don't give that out without being 100% sure of who you're dealing with. And, and they're always saying that, uh, particularly with your computer, that um, it's important to continuously change that password out there. Don't use the same password and mix it up with all your other credit cards and all your other uh, items that require a uh, password. And that's, that's correct, Dave, and also to use um, websites that, that employ secure socket layer right. uh, encryption for their, their credit card transactions. Because, you know, you talk to people that have had their identity stolen, it can be a, a, a tremendous nightmare. It can take months and months to unscramble. Sometimes even years. Right. Mike, uh, one of the other things that people need to be uh, aware of when they're shopping is to make sure that they don't inadvertently leave their credit card on the counter. People get distracted and they leave it up there and all of a sudden, you know, someone could stake it or even, even a clerk uh, in a store. You have to be mindful of that as well. That's correct. It, you know, it, it's really the simple things, David, that, that people, you keeping your, your purse or your wallet close right. to you, not allowing people to engage you in conversation while you're actually making a transaction right. so that they can look over your shoulder at your personal information. These are simple things, but, but in the, the heat of the holiday season, it, it. you really have to pay attention. And for the females out there, they need to keep that purse zipped up. Absolutely. Mike, uh, okay, so you purchase your gifts and you put them in the car. Sometimes these people follow shoppers home. So what do you do if you think that someone is following you, they may have seen you in the store, they may be tailing you, what do you do at that point? Those happen very rarely, Dave. Again, um, criminals are looking for crimes of opportunity and, and they're not, that, that's not really common that they do it. It does happen, but mm -hmm. if that does happen to you, the best thing to do is keep your, your windows and your doors locked if you feel that, that you're in danger in any way or reach for your cell phone and call 911 and we'll, we'll send a deputy out to make sure you're okay. And that's, uh, I'm glad you mentioned the cell phone because it's probably uh, n no better tool to have with you than that personal cell phone. I mean, you can instantly call uh, 911 and, and get to an emergency dispatcher if you think, you know, you're in danger. Sure, it's also important on, on your cell phones though around the holidays, it, it, a cell phone is another piece of your personal information. Yeah. So it's important to enable the password protection on your cell phone so that in case that it gets misplaced or stolen that thieves can't get to your personal information that way. I want to talk a little bit, Mike, about, uh, you know, the problem uh, out on the roads these days. A lot of times, uh, you know, throughout the holidays, people go to holiday parties. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, you have to be extra vigilant uh, for people that may have had too much to drink and you yourself, if you're going to go to a party, make sure you don't overindulge or at least have that designated driver. Drunk driving is a big issue. It is a big issue. There were more than uh, 33,000 convictions last year statewide right. for impaired drivers. Uh, we'll be out in, in force this holiday season. We will have our traffic unit out working throughout the holidays, supplementing our regular patrols looking for impaired drivers. Mike, uh, walk us through uh, what happens if you're arrested for DUI, because a lot of people don't realize, I mean, I, I think I'm right in saying you automatically go to jail, is that correct? Yes, if you, if you are arrested for driving under the influence and the officer has enough probable cause to uh, arrest you for that, right. then you will go to jail. I think you have to spend, what, a, a minimum of eight hours or something like that in jail? That's and correct. Then, and then uh, the cost to get an attorney and all of that and your insurance and potentially your loss of license and all of that, a, a DUI, if you haven't injured someone, uh, is uh, a, a penalty that uh, takes years to get, a, to get over. That's right. Uh, I read somewhere the other day that where it can cost upwards of eight thousand uh, dollars per offense. Absolutely, Mike. Uh, you mentioned this uh, a minute ago, but I know the the men and women of the sheriff's office uh, work very closely with the Florida Highway Patrol, um, the city police officers, and so forth. And uh, you'll be out and about on on the roads uh, this year looking for people with uh, you know, maybe too much to drink. Yes, we will, Dave. Um, we're we found in our experiences that that roving patrols work much better than static roadblocks. Interesting. So we'll be out in, in force looking for impaired drivers and uh, 
The numbers that we see, the, the, the numbers are steadily declining, so we hope that our enforcement efforts and our education efforts are, are working to, to keep mm -hmm. those numbers down. All right, so you're driving home, uh, you're on 92 or I-4 or whatever, and you see a, a driver that you think is weaving or perhaps have had too much to drink. Mm -hmm. uh, what should you do? Well, you want to maintain a safe distance from this right. driver because they are a, a danger to everyone around right. them. Uh, the best thing to do is to call 911, right. tell our dispatcher what you're seeing, what your location is, and they'll ask you for information until we can get an officer out there to, to make a, a traffic stop. And a paired driver, uh, should you keep that driver in front of you or behind you? Well, again, Dave, you, you, you want to keep a, a safe distance away. Right. I think I would more rather have them in front of me where I can me watch too. them than, than behind me. You mentioned, Mike, uh, call 911 if you think that, um, you know, someone has, has had too much to drink. A lot of people, you know, tend to think, well, you know, I'm not really sure, and do I really want to make that 911 call? I guess uh, what, you're, what I'm hearing you say, that if you have uh, any thought that someone is out there and may be weaving or, or whatever, uh, don't hesitate to call 911. That's what we're here for, Dave. I mean, 911 is there to answer questions and to dispatch officers and, and EMS and fire personnel in case of an emergency. So. You're not going to wake us up. I guess you'd rather be safe than sorry. You sure, you sure wouldn't want to not have made that 911 call and then read in the newspaper the next day that this person killed someone on the road. So You're absolutely right. Mike, uh, road rage, uh, you know, people get uh, uptight over the holidays and, uh, you know, they get in a hurry and all of that. Uh, road rage uh, throughout the year, but particularly during the holidays, is something to be concerned about. I know uh, last year when we were talking to Sheriff Johnson, one of the things that he said, which I thought was pretty uh, salient advice, and that is, is just take a chill pill, just, just relax, you know? And uh, so I, I think that's a good safety reminder for motorists out there, just be, be cool, right? Yeah, that, that's good advice from the sheriff. Take, take the chill pill, everybody relax, take a deep breath. Right. But it, and if you're out there and you see road rage, if you see aggressive driving, again, grab your cell phone and call 911. We, we need to, to at least make contact with that person and find out what's going on. And don't engage with that person. Absolutely not. Mike, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, the kids get uh, new bikes or s skateboards mm -hmm. or roller skates or whatever for Christmas. Uh, you know, the schools are out for the holiday recess. Uh, if you're going to be out and about in the neighborhoods and so forth, it's a good time to also remind everyone to be careful in that neighborhood for those kids that are out on the road. Sure, and, and the message for the parents are that, you know, in addition to giving the, that child a, a nice new bicycle, give them a second present of that safety equipment that goes with it. The Get helmet. that helmet. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Mike, again, uh, I want to thank you for uh, being with us today. And again, uh, happy holidays to the men and women of the Sheriff's Office. It looks like uh, if we all do our part, we'll, we'll be safe over the holidays. Well, thank you, Dave. It's a pleasure to be here. Our guest today has been Mike Coffin. He's the Chief Deputy of the Volusia County Sheriff's Department. And with that, Amber, we'll go back to you. Thanks, Dave. And thank you for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about our program, just give us a call at any of the numbers you see listed here, or you can log on to volusia.org. You can also watch the show online. Just go to volusia.org and click on the Volusia Magazine icon. And we hope you won't forget to listen to Volusia Today. Volusia County Government's Public Information Radio Broadcast. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Patterson. Have a great evening.